Welcome to the instructional video for the 2017 Leica Krios 3008. So going around the vehicle we have a locker at the rear which goes the whole length underneath. We can see the carpets are located there. You have access on the other side. Press it in, click it and then lock with the key. Above that is your toilet cassette. So again with the Leica it locks with the one key and you do have a spare set. Lift up the toilet cassette, turn it round, undo the grey top here by unscrewing it, press the orange button at the bottom, turn upside down and empty out. Clean it out, put your chemicals inside it, slide it back in and make sure the handle just locates just in that little lip there. You do need to have the toilet valve closed to operate that. Forward of that is where you fill up your fresh water. So put your key in, twist it, take the cap off, use your normal hose pipe to fill up the fresh water. Once it's full it will overflow out the vehicle just from that point there. And in front of that is the external shower point that comes standard as part of the Dolce Vita pack. Further forward you have your trim event for the heating is gas and electric. I'll show you how to work that in a moment. Be careful that does get quite warm. And Behind the passenger door we have the diesel filler point. You'll see there it's clearly marked diesel. Into the cab, bonnet release catch is located just here and you pull it to open up the bonnet. And underneath the carpet in that location there is where your engine battery is located. So underneath the carpet there. Underneath the engine, you lift up the little yellow lever to release the bonnet. Down here we've got your positive point and your negative point should you need to jump it. Oil, dipstick and screen wash is just located to the left hand side. Moving further around, it is a Fiat 150 brake horse. It does have an awning fitted to it, which you locate it just on the top here. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that when you come and collect the vehicle. Mains plug-in point is just located behind the fridge vents and the gas points located. This has got a gas low system which isn't standard. Uh, to fill it up you take away the little port there, put your gas filler point on and then fill it up. This particular one is a two system. So to use the gas, release the gas just with the valves depending on which bottle you want and to decide on which bottle you want you need to turn this with a little dial here pointing to that bottle or the opposite way to point to that one. Filling it up you can fill it up with the valves open or the valves closed it's entirely up to you. To the back of the vehicle we've got the larger access garage door and that leads us into the underfloor storage where again You've got access from under there. Toolkit is in the black box here. Awning pole and your centre rafter is just located here. And the makeup cushions, if you do want to make up the drop down table dinette option, this is the cushion that you use. Now importantly here, in this area, you will see there are two stickers. There's a sticker on the left that tells you that you want to turn the wheel to fill up the fresh water to 100% and one just located there to 20% which is your travelling capacitor and what we're looking for on this particular one are the black wheels just inside here so just located where my fingers pointing there and you turn them clockwise to allow you to fill up the tank and anti-clockwise to empty the tanks it is a little bit dark on the pictures so I will show you when you come to collect the vehicle uh, where them two positions are please be careful not to over tighten them uh, as you will pull them off the threads so it'll be gentle to open them and gentle to close them and that will stop the fresh water from emptying out the vehicle if the valves are closed your waste water valve is located underneath here and to open and close it you gain access through the underfloor area here so just press that down and lift that up using the handle here so down to close it, pull it up to empty it, and that is your waste water. So any water that goes down the shower or 
through the sinks in the vehicle. So push flat and that. So that's where your wastewater is. Your fresh water fills at the back uh, and the filler port is on the passenger side. Moving to the inside of the vehicle, you can lock the habitation door by pressing that down and then open it up by just squeezing the little handle there. It does have a blind on there, a bin on there, and with the door open, it also too has a flash screen. Just there. So, control panel wise, I'll start from the beginning and I'll turn it off. So the middle button turns all your power off. You'll see the control panel goes blank. To turn it on, you press and hold it, and it lights up the control panel. It takes a few seconds to do this, but it then will activate it to where you've left it previously. So, you'll see that we've got some blue lights on here. So let's start from the beginning. We have got here battery voltage levels. So telling you for your engine battery and your habitation battery. We have got your levels in your fresh water and your wastewater. So they're accurate to a degree. Uh, they work off a probe system. So that will allow you to see when your tank is like quarter full, half full, three quarters are full. And the same with your wastewater. The button next to that is your auxiliary button. And that will allow you to operate the USB charging points, which is just located just underneath there. Without their auxiliary pressed, you will not be able to use this. The next button is your on off button for the control panels I've shown you. And the one to the right of that is your 12 volt power. So that will give you 12 volt power inside the vehicle, allowing you to use your lights and your 12 volt sockets. Obviously, if you're plugged into mains, that will then operate the main sockets as well. The button to the side is your water pump. So once you've filled up your fresh water, uh, you need to make sure that you close the drain valve on the boiler and then you would press the pump on and that would work and fill up your boiler and cold water in your vehicle. I'll show you how to do the boiler in a moment. Lastly, we have got your external awning light. To the side of that, we've got the bed operation up and down button for the drop down bed at the front, which is located just there. And again, as I previously mentioned, the table does drop down and you will use some info cushions to make up a bed underneath, should you wish. To the left of that, your heater controls. And before I move to that, I'm going to show you where your boiler drain valve is. The boiler drain valve is located underneath the seats that are forward facing with the seat belts. And it is just located just behind that frame down here. Now, as you see it there with the diamond pointing across the vehicle and right at the bottom down here, there is a blue button that needs pressing in. Now, when I turn the diamond, you will see and hear that there's water coming out. So what you need to do is turn it and press the button in. That will allow you to fill up the system. It's quite important that you press the button in as well as turning the diamond otherwise water will still keep coming out of the boiler unit and you must do that before you fill up the boiler to activate the hot water so this is what we call your frost protection valve and that is located just behind that frame here underneath the forward facing seats the forward facing seats do have seat belts just to show there and for your traveling passengers you would remove the base cushion and this cushion and the flap folds in to give the leg room for the traveling people just in that area the table just slide left and right forward and backwards and to slide it you must remember to release the button underneath there then allows it to slide easier and then lock it in place the handle here is to lock the table in the down position uh, or in the top position depending on where you move it you then push it down and then lock it in place to set the height of the table so that is locking the height that is allowing you to move it left and right forward and backwards located just in this area here is where your manual winder point for the drop down bed goes in it goes in down the side up here through that hole and allows the bed to wind down should the power go 
do the motor. So going back to your control panel, once we've filled up that boiler full of water by turning on the pump, we then want to go to the operation for the heating and the hot water. So we've got a few different options. The first one being the temperature that we want it in the vehicle. You turn the dial to the desired temperature and then press the button. I then go to your water, if we've got water in, remember you can use this system without putting water in uh, by leaving that set off and just having your heating on. But in this occasion, we have 40 degrees, 60 degrees, or the boost option, I'm gonna choose the hot. So the boost option basically takes all the power away from the heating uh, to get the hot water up to temperature as quick as possible. Uh, and it does vice versa on the heating when you choose that option. The next option along then is the fuel source. Now I always tell my customers the same thing. Make sure you put your gas or plug into electric before you turn this unit on. It will stop any fault cords coming up. So by turning the dial it will navigate the option. So gas, mix which is gas and electrics, one kilowatt. Mix two which is gas and electric, two kilowatt. And you should see that they're changing above. One kilowatt electric only, two kilowatt electric. So let's put it on the one kilowatt because I am plugged into mains. We can see that by the little button that indicates it just there. And then lastly, we've got the fan option. So eco, which is slow, high, which is fast. And again, then if we select the high and let it run for about five minutes, we can then go back into it and select the boost option. We do have a separate video for the heating already running on our YouTube channel. So if you need to refer to that or give us a call, if there's any issues, all the error codes are in the book as well. To turn the unit off, and we tell you to do this before you unplug or turn off your gas, you press and hold it, and it will tell you that the unit is turning off. So we've got electric, we've got water, now we want to put lights on. So the lights are located in two main areas, one down near the door, and there is a switch there for the step as well. You have several different light points throughout the vehicle, a light point here for your kitchen and an extractor fan point and we also have the lighting strip just next to the bedroom area which also lights up the areas there so you'll see they have individual switches as well on the actual lights there we've added a tv point in the rear and a tv point which is standard in the front just that Above in here is where your status aerial is and for the aerial to work you must have this booster box turned on So there's a little switch underneath here Which turns it off and turns it on if it is green It's telling you you've got a strong signal if it goes anywhere uh, other than uh, amber and red you may need to just change the actual uh, height of the aerial which you do by releasing the pole down and make sure it's down when you're traveling are taking the pole up by just releasing that little collar at the top there. You do have a 12 volt socket, a spare 12 volt socket just in there. And you have your sockets just up there for your TV. This will close together nice and neat. And to pull the TV down underneath here, you will see there is a little lever. Just pull that towards us, be careful with your fingers. And then that will pull the unit down in the lower position. The windows have fly screens and blinds on. Pinch the two together to set your height. Release the clip, pinch together and go down. This window is a sliding window. So just make sure that that's latched on. We have an opening window just here. Make sure that you undo each of the window stays just there and that too has a blind just located on there the windows all around the vehicle are exactly the same as the other one and we do have the nettings for a bit of privacy the roof lights you must press the button in and then pull the handle down and that is the same in this area in the middle and there is one just located just underneath that bed as well. You'll see the ladders are under the bed. You have your separate lights which turn off either side there. 
the little fittings at either side up here are for the safety net. Should you have anyone up there that is worried about falling out in an evening or during the day, then you would put them up there. Kitchen area, we've got your oven and grill, which operates on this side, and your burners just on this side. We have your igniter just here, and we have a light and the rotisserie option just there. Above, plenty of storage. Simply just pull the handle down to open it. The kitchen storage space, just press the button. In when you're traveling and out when you want to open it. And again, storage just in there. Underneath, we have got the rotisserie points. So that's what they are in that bottom drawer there. And again, just click it in place. Underneath here, on the bedside, we've got two large storage cupboards. So again, just making sure that they're clipped in. And we've got storage space just underneath the fridge unit. Storage, continuing on it. Just make sure you press the buttons in before you travel off. Yeah. And we've got all your isolation points and your pump and your filter all located in this lower bottom area. In the wardrobe, you just twist the handle. We have got a large storage area and a light that comes on when you open the door. Bathroom area, yeah, toilet roll holder, just located there. Uh, you've got your mixer taps. We've got in here a plug socket, just located up there. And a 12 volt socket, just up here. Your window in the washroom your toilet, your flush, and your indicator. Now the thing you've got to remember on the toilet is to keep the blade valve closed and in the position it is towards the shower it's closed. To open it you simply just turn it towards the sink and that will open the toilet and then pull it back to close it to allow you to pull the toilet out. We have a ventilation up there to let the steam go out for the shower and again, turnbuckles that need closing and the press, but, press stud just on this side for the door to allow you to uh, secure the doors in transit. To get out of the bathroom area, simply pinch that and slide the door around. That allows us then to get out. Plenty of storage area around the back and this has an alarm with an internal PIR just located just up there. Fridge wise, we have the Dometic fridge. Again, quite a simple unit to operate. You turn the power on, it then either selects gas and you'll hear a clicking noise. The battery op option, which only works when the engine is running or the mains option when you are plugged in. Your other option to do is to click the automatic and that will search for the strongest source. So in this case, we're on electric, so it'll choose electric. Got a blower around the freezer and your temperature gauge just there to set the temperature from the cold, warmest to the coldest. And then a reset, just as it tells you here, if you do have a gas fault. Turn the unit off, you press and hold the button and that turns the unit off. The dividing door for the bedroom is literally just a press stud and that will allow the door to close off, screen off the living area. From the bedroom area, your cab area, so your seats will swivel around, they do adjust here, front and back, lifting up and your backrest adjusts just on the side there. The armrest adjusters are just actually in there and we'll twist to adjust it. On these particular ones, to spin them around, they are quite stiff because they're a robust fitting. Push down on the handle, and that allows you to swivel the seats around. To move it forward and backwards, there's just a bar at the front of the vehicle to allow you to slide it forwards and backwards to navigate it. Located just behind the driver's seat, we have a mains plug socket down at the bottom. 
all your fuses and your main indicator just located just there on the driver's seat you will have to do some sliding and moving around to miss the gear lever uh, the handbrake lever sorry and we've got light switches just up here storage space either side at the front as well we have got the leather steering wheel and the steering wheel controls we have got the fiat head unit which does have radio media navigation now please bear in mind the navigation isn't vehicle specific it is fitted for a fiat van so please be careful bluetooth option loaded on there and then you have your media options which you can link in underneath here cup holders this little bar is the winding bar for your drop down bed at the front the manual one which i showed you earlier in the video we have glove box on the top which is cooled with your aircon and this is climate control automatic gearbox cruise control speed limiter indicators and then on this side we have your windscreen wipers lock buttons and window operations as well as the mirror operations just at the front and a window switch just there the little button above is a ratio option so you can choose this at slow speeds only when you're in automatic to allow you to get up steep wet inclines and in the middle we have got traction plus which gives you more traction on wet slippy icy surfaces and hill descent to help you going down steep slopes hazard lights are there and a lock button there one other good feature on the Leica is we have a little step switch here and a, and a warning to tell you that the garage doors are open so if you do see these just check the step you can press and hold that button it will bring the step in when the ignition's on and it will also warn you to tell you that you've not closed your garage the vehicle comes with a full instruction pack so this will be pointed out to you on collection that basically runs through our check and handover instructional video for the Leica Krios 3008 we hope you enjoyed the video please give us some feedback and comments if I've missed anything I'll add to it we hope that you will enjoy your new motorhome and we look forward to seeing where you go and what you do in the future thank you